Now, here's Bill Strickland with some tips to help make you a better climber, Bill. Thanks, Phil. First, we're gonna take a look at how these champions climb in the saddle. Sitting is the most efficient way to climb. When you stand, you use about 12% more oxygen and spike your heart rate by about 8%. So it makes sense to stay seated as often as you can. Look at the racer's elbows, which stay bent and relaxed, and their backs, which never hunch. This keeps your diaphragm open for easy breathing and also keeps you from rocking on the bike, which wastes energy. Like our climbing champs, keep your hands on the brake hoods or about a thumb's length from the stem on either side of the bar. You'll have more control, breathe easier, and stay loose. All riders start to tense up when the effort gets hard. To prevent this, focus on three key areas. First, move your jaw to keep it from clenching. Next, drop your shoulders to keep them from hunching. And finally, wiggle or drum your fingers. These three areas are barometers for the rest of your body. If you keep them loose, chances are the rest of your body will be relaxed as well. Synchronize your breaths to pedal strokes. This helps you pace yourself up the climb. Another breathing trick, to get great oxygen transfer, push your stomach out as you inhale. This takes practice. Most of us naturally pull our stomachs in when we inhale. As the climb progresses, alternate your position. Shift your weight back on your saddle to use your powerful hamstring and glute muscles. For continuous, intense power output, when the pedal reaches the five o'clock position, pull backward on it. You're doing this right when your heel drops on the downstroke. Then, after a few minutes, scoot forward toward the nose to give those muscles a rest and use your quads. Two other positioning tips. With your upper body bent forward about 45 degrees, you use mostly the muscles in your butt and lower back. Sit more upright and you put more burden on the thigh muscles. Doing this can give one set of your muscles a temporary rest while you use the others. And the final point about sitting. Don't worry if you lightly bob your upper body. The more still you are, the less energy you waste. But even the greatest climbers bob slightly. It keeps us loose and helps establish a pedaling rhythm. Although standing is less efficient, it's just as important to climbing success because you generate a lot more power when you're out of the saddle. And it just looks cooler too. When should you stand? Well, there aren't really any rules. Generally, light riders stand more often than heavy riders. The right mix for most of us is about 10 to 25% of our total climbing time. Stand when you're responding to attacks, when the pitch gets severely steeper, or if you start losing power in the saddle. To make a smooth transition, as one pedal goes down, shift your weight onto it and rise smoothly out of the saddle. Shift up one to three gears. You can handle bigger gears when you stand. Kiapuchi, Pantani, and some of the other racers we've seen are some of the greatest out-of-the-saddle climbers ever. The idea of standing is not just to use all of your most powerful muscles, but to let gravity do some of the pedaling for you. Let your body weight move the pedals by dropping onto them. Two final tips about out-of-the-saddle climbing. To get maximum power from your butt muscles, they should feel like you're standing to get up out of a chair, not bending to sit in it. It's a very fine difference, but an important one. And when you're on really steep stuff, climbs with a 10 to 20% grade, forget about pushing down on the handlebar with your arms. You'll climb better by pulling up on the bar on the same side as the downstroke. So far, we've talked about how to maximize your climbing ability, how to be a star. But what about those times when all you wanna do is hang on to your friends and finally reach the top with the group instead of behind it? Here's a great strategy for survival. Most riders begin a hill in a comfortable gear and shift to progressively easier gears as climbing effort increases. Our survival technique goes against instinct. You shift to a harder gear when you start to slow down. Here's how to do it. As you start to climb, shift to an easier gear sooner than you normally would. Spin away on the bottom two thirds of the climb. Wait for the right time to make your upshift. When your cadence begins to fade and you start moving forward in the group as your overgeared companions slow and begin shifting to smaller gears. Shift to a harder gear, one to three cogs smaller, and stand. You'll have a slower RPM, but this allows a more powerful pedal stroke with the same energy output. Don't accelerate. Your tendency will be to stand on the gear too hard, 
This might feel great for a few strokes, but you'll end up paying for it. When you sit, shift back to the easier gear. This works because you save energy while others burn it, and keep your heart rate down even when you shift to harder gears. But stick with this sneaky technique and you'll surprise your Superfly friends and yourself.